Common Ground Radio on the Air Nation Radio Network, where we recap the past week from the daytime winning, daytime Emmy winning days of our lives. It's January 5th, 2014, and thank you for joining us this evening. It's Sunday, of course. I hope you all are staying warm and safe this evening, because I know that the weather around the United States is pretty wicked. Um, it's 40 degrees and raining and cloudy here, so I'm just doing a peachy, but if it's bad weather where you are, I hope you're staying safe and warm, because I know that next week, well, you know, on Tuesday, it's going to be brutally cold from what I've heard, um, and a lot of the local schools around our state have already closed for tomorrow because the wind chills are supposed to be down negative 20, negative 30, so um, that's crazy, but I have a whole other week of vacation before I head back for my final semester, so I think I'll just stay home and keep nice and warm inside my house. Um, by the way, if you are new to our show, uh, go ahead and look on to airnationradio.com and check out all our past shows. You can listen to them and listen to them when and where you please. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I guess we should introduce ourselves. I'm rambling on here and just never even thought to introduce ourselves. Anyways, I'm your host, Brandon, and I'm online with us as always is my co-host, Misty. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot to introduce ourselves. I mean, I figured if, you know, the regular listeners should us by now, but just give a little intro. So, how do you are? What do you say? Sorry. <laughs> How's the weather down in Tennessee? It is freezing. We're supposed to get snow tonight, up leading into tomorrow morning, but they always tell us that and we never get it, so... Mm-hmm. I'll just wake up in the morning and be surprised if we have some snow. <laughs> Weather people, it must be a good job to have to be a meteorologist because you can be wrong and you don't get in trouble for it. I know. But you still get your paycheck. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always wanted to be one when I was little, but then I found I had to take a lot of chemistry, and <clears throat> I'm not good at chemistry, so I quickly changed my mind on that. Um, anyways, let's see. Before we get into our discussion this evening, um, it's time for our tweet of the week. Misty did not find any this week because she's a little busy, so I went ahead and found about four tweets from uh, today's actors, past and present. Um, let's see. Well, actually, they're all past or present actors. None of them are from the past. Um, I think I'll start out with Allison Sweeney's tweet. You can follow her at Allie underscore Sweeney. At the beach this morning, doing a doing a final read through of the next novel. I'm turning it in tomorrow, so Yay. be on the lookout for Alex Sweeney's next. I wonder how many she has. She's got a couple, I think. I know she had yeah. the one for sure because I heard her talking about it. So I don't know if this is just her second one or if it's her third one. Hmm. Yeah, I knew sure. about Star Attraction. Sure yeah, that's, that's the one I knew about. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one I have is from Galen Gearing, of course, who plays Ray. If you can follow him at Galen Gearing. Walmart recalls. <laughs> I don't think I can get through this without laughing, and obviously I couldn't. Um, Walmart recalls five spice donkey meat. Oh man, come on. What the hell? 2014 done. Bring on 2015. <laughs> I have no idea. I had no idea that Walmart sold donkey meat to begin with. Um, but. <laughs> I guess if you wanted it, you're not going to be able to get it anymore. Um, I just thought it was funny. And the way you were it was just, yeah. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hold on. Now I'm, now I'm going to try to transition into Jim Lilly's tweet. It's just going to make me laugh even more. So let me try to play with myself. Um, Jen Lilly, of course. You can follow her at Jen underscore Lilly. Um, You can guarantee that we'll have a tweet from her every week. (laughs) She says, I hope Bradley Cooper will call his kids Mini Coopers. (laughs) She is so funny. Uh, uh, I can't finish this. Uh, uh, I'll be all right, I promise. Um, (laughs) Now, to end on a more more serious and somber note, a uh, tweet from Freddie Smith, who plays Sonny. You can follow him at Freddie M. Smith. Uh, what a pleasure it has, This was on January 2nd. What a pleasure it has been working with Chandler Massey. Watch today's episode. Hashtag good times. Aww. So, um, well, 
Misty. I think we should – Misty's going to have some casting news for you at the end of the show, and she'll get more into exactly what that means if you aren't up on the casting news. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's sad, but he's it'll be okay. Anyways, um, the, 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 before we get into our recap, we'd like to um, – so if you'd like to call in and discuss anything about last week's the number is one seven two four 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 seven four four four. And the call ID you'll have to enter is one three one one five one and finally one in pound and you're in. I know it's a lot of numbers, but um if you walk, if you're walking to the chat, the numbers are right there on the bottom of the screen. Don't be a call at any point during our show when you have something you'd like to discuss. Um, I have Monday and Thursday show this week, while Misty will take Tuesday and Friday. Um, she'll have casting news, and we both have numbers. We'll see how it goes who delivers those, um, because there's no new days on New Year's Day, which was Wednesday. So <clears throat> I think I'll go ahead and get things kicked off with Monday's days. Let me pull up my notes here. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, <clears throat> what I want to discuss on Monday's days is the um, reveal of Gabby, Kate, and Sammy's misdoings to Will, or what they did to Nick, and Will heard them. Well, let me just get into another Sam. Anyways, to start off, Gabby gets a text from Sammy to burn her coat. And Sunny, it's like she would watch Sammy burn her coat. So he goes over to the closet, you know, the, the infamous closet in Sunny and Will and Gabby's apartment, and is that it's because it was the coat she was wearing the night that she killed Nick. And then as soon as she saw that there was Will, and then asked if he heard her correctly. And Sonny tries to uh, defend Gabby and says that she was speaking metaphorically. <laughs> and Will asks, is she going to burn her coat metaphorically? And they didn't have a response to that. Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, I thought it was funny that he was in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Just because. I was like, oh my gosh, he's Freaking totally out. pulling a sunny. <laughs> On sunny. Like that was funny. <laughs> uh, I like how they've used the closet, though. I never thought the clo- a closet would get so much use on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> to continue with that, um, Will, said, Will is obviously confused. He doesn't know how to comprehend what he just heard. And he says to Gabby, he says, who are you? Who are you, Gabby? And he tries to defend Gabby and set, set by saying it's self-defense. Um, and then Will says, well, is that why she didn't want to tell anybody about it? It was self-defense. He's being sarcastic because he's just he's so lost and so he doesn't understand why what just happened. I mean, can you imagine if you just found out you care about murder zombies? I mean, I don't imagine what more action. But um, Will soon finds out that the murder took place around um, Thanksgiving, I believe. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, yeah. He says that you came over a month ago, and he asks, where is he? And Sonny says, I shouldn't laugh at this, but I am. Um, Sonny says, he's at the bottom of the Salem, Salem River. <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny. Maybe it's just that I don't like the character of Nick whatsoever. But um, anyways, let's continue. Will says you drowned, or asked. Will says you drowned him. Sonny says it's very complicated. <laughs> I don't see how complicated it is. But um, <laughs> Will gets ready to call Roman before she's on this plane. His grandpa. Um, and Sonny says that if he does go to the police, that's just going to make things worse. Um, and this was Will knew that there is individuals involved from Gabby. Gabby tells Will that they this is what Will says, Well, well uh, please do not tell me that my grandma uh, grandma Kim and mom are involved in this. <laughs> she figures out that they are. So he goes <laughs> Smack up wake up Will. He's not gonna wake up from um says that they were helping her when they killed him, that makes sense that they were helping Gabby cover up the murder, basically, is what I mean. Uh, so we Sammy and Kate, but now everything, I mean, need to 
he figure out what the next episode is. Will says, it was the best. Will says, my God, my daughter is being raised by the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched the Sopranos. I'm not sure what that analogy is. I'm, I'm like, Sopranos, Demiras, what's the difference? <laughs> hey, luckily, that's not the next. So, tells Gavin and Sonny that he wants to hear the whole story start to finish. Um, first, he wants to know how long Sonny knew, and Gabby wastes no time in saying that Sonny knew the time that he was in the hospital. So, tells Will not to jump to conclusions. Will tell me not to jump to conclusions. Um, as they're arguing, Gary is in the room, but she wakes up and because they're yelling. You're cutting out uh, a little bit. I, well, no. I'm, I can only get bits and pieces. Um, um, Sonny was going to go uh, check on Ari, but um, Will said that he wanted to because he wanted to do something normal. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Um, and Gabby tells Will that she's sorry, but of course that does nothing for Will at this point. Um, Gabby said to say that she has never, no matter what they say, Will, just want to hang it on him. Uh, meanwhile, Will is in the bed and talking to her. She's awake. Will says that I want you to grow up in a world full of love and some semblance of stability. But my crazy, my crazy fan is doing that for you. So do I? Barging in, and she asks Sunny why. Um, she is too. Um, I'm we can't hear you. Me. We can't hear you, Brandon. I could hang up and call back in. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. While he's doing that, we will just chat a little bit. I do think it's funny how um, we'll refer to his family as um, the Soprano family. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny considering his mom is about to marry or maybe not marry a Demira. So I thought that was a pretty funny analogy there. And for those that may have just joined in listening, Brandon is calling back in. He was having some technical difficulties. So we'll be back with where he left off in just a moment. Travis is cracking me up in the chat room. <laughs> but um, let's see. I'm trying to think about something else for Monday that I could go ahead and talk about, but I did not take my notes for Monday. And I really couldn't hear where he left off. But I do know that they start, EJ and Samantha end up showing up at Will and Sunny's apartment. And um, they're like, it's all right, it's all right. EJ knows, and of course they all pitch a fit. And um, that EJ knows about it, and Sammy kind of just brushes it off, like whatever, like it doesn't matter. And um, and he starts demanding that they all just get rid of all everything that they were wearing that day. And um, I think Brandon is back. I'll let him finish the conversation for Monday. You there? Hello. Hi. I, w- I just, I got rid of my cell phone and just went and got my landline because I knew you'd be able okay. to hear me on my landline better. Okay. So, you go ahead and take back over. Okay. So I'm not sure where <laughs> I should go back to. Um, let's see. Where wh- I don't even know where I was. Um <laughs> 
do you what was the last thing you remember hearing me talk about? <laughs> well, it was um, Kate showed up. Okay. Um, and that was the last thing I remember. Well, let me hearing. go back one to Will and Ari in the bedroom. So um, Will and Ari on are in the bedroom, and he says to Ari, he says, I want you to grow up in a world full of love and some semblance of stability. He says, my crazy family is going to ruin that for you, so what do I do? And he's pondering what, what's, what's going to happen. What should I do? What should we do? What, what's the next step? So, segue back into where I stopped. Kate comes barging in, and she asks why Sonny told Will, but they said that he was, <laughs> he was in the closet. <clears throat> <laughs> Kate says that he, she will pay someone to take, out, take that thing out. Um, Kate and Sammy, or EJ and Sammy, then enter come over to the apartment, um, and Kate, or Sammy says that EJ now knows as well. Kate just kind of rolls her eyes <laughs> um, in normal Kate fashion. Um, EJ says to Kate, <laughs> but you might be glad that I'm in the loop this time on in this situation. <clears throat> and uh, Kate doesn't seem too sure about that. We all know how Kate's, what Kate's relationship is with the Demir family. Um Sammy, meanwhile, being, you know, Miss, well, never mind. Sammy wants to go calm down Will. She wants to see what she can do to calm him down. But I think we all know that Sammy will just make things worse like she always does in every situation she's involved in. So, <clears throat> Sonny says that he'll go talk to him. He'll go see what he can do. Well, meanwhile, he went to go check on him, and Sonny comes out. <laughs> Sonny comes back from the bedroom and says that Will's gone and he has taken Ari with, taken Ari with him. So, of course, what would be the next logical thing to do for these people? Kate and Sammy to bicker about whose fault it is. Um, <laughs> Sammy thinks that he may have left uh, and went to the police, but Sonny doesn't think that he could have gotten far, and he doesn't think that he would would go to the police. He says that he's going to go find Will on his own, by himself, without the help of those three wonderful women. Um, and EJ agrees with Sonny and tells the ladies that it wouldn't look good if they are desperately searching for Will. So, meanwhile, flash to Will, we see that he is in the square with Ariana. And he sets her down on the table um, and says, so where do we go? He, he picks her up and they head somewhere, which we see later where it is. Um, meanwhile, back at the apartment, Kate sarcastically tells Gabby to take notes on all the events that have happened leading up to the murder, so, you know, they can have everything in line. Well, you know, knowing Gabby, she goes and gets a pen and paper and begins to take notes on everything that happened. I mean, I I thought Kate was being sarcastic. She wasn't. She? <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I so. I, uh, poor Gabby. Oh, don't even. No, no, no. Not poor Gabby. Don't even start with that. She's just not very smart. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Kate asks, uh, EJ is there, and Kate asks, so since you are the go-to guy on how to get away with murder, how do we get away with murder, she asks. Um, Flash to Sonny searching for Will. He walks by the pub and looks in, and um, Will's not there, but JJ is in there with Liam, who I didn't get to, but I'll mention at the end. Um, and he texts Will. See that Will has taken Ari to um, the infamous park bench, you know, in the town square where everybody goes to sit and argue or, you know, talk or do whatever they want. Reveal secrets. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> that's, I think that's, I, I don't, is that the only park bench in the town? I mean, why does everybody go to that one park bench? <laughs> well, it's either that bench or the drug bench. <laughs> all out in the woods. Right, okay. Yeah, I just think, what's that one? Yeah. Um, Will tells, as he takes her to the bench, and he says to Ari, he says, um, he's not sure where they're going to go, but they'll figure something out. Will sees that he has a text from Sonny, but he ignores it. Um, Will then goes on to say to Ari, he says that everything, I thought this was a nice quote, he says, everything may be crazy right now, but I will protect you, I promise, because you're the most important thing to me and nothing else matters. Aww, so sweet. Um, (laughs) Then Sonny appears and says, I totally agree. And then he walks over to Will, and then they stare at each other for, like, five awkward seconds. Um, 
It really is. That soap act like on soaps, they always have that awkward like five second stare at the end of a scene. Like they just stare. Like it's I don't know. I just find it awkward myself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, at the apartment, EJ tells the ladies. <laughs> He tells them how to get away with murder. He has a piece of Gabby's clothing that he found at the scene of the crime, and he tells them that they all have to get rid of everything that they were wearing that night. But Kate doesn't take too kindly to this idea because she was wearing a $2,000 pair of um, Louis Vuitton, I think it was, a pair of shoes. And Yeah, I just know they were her $2,000 pair of boots. I yeah. don't remember. Um, yeah, I'm not up on fashion, so I wouldn't know. But she said she's not going to get rid of them. And Sammy says, oh, that's okay. Then you'll just be the best-dressed woman in Statesville. <laughs> oh, Sammy. Uh, well, it'd be true, though. She would. I'm sure she would. If she was in jail, she would probably be the best-dressed woman in, in prison. Absolutely, with her blue streak and all. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so EJ tells them that he will, or not him, but his men, his people, I believe was the quote, his people, will go by the um, river and do a sweep of it, and then they'll come by and make sure that every, they have everything to get rid of so they can get away with murder. <clears throat> Only on a soap. So that's all I have for that storyline. <laughs> um, the other things I didn't mention were uh, uh, one of the bigger big storylines on that episode were Daniel, um, Nicole, Brady, and Eric all at the Kiriakis Mansion talking about um, Brady's um, relapse, um, and then a very dramatic ending to that encounter. Let's just say there's someone got their lights punched out. Um, <laughs> JJ and Abby had a little scene at the beginning. Um, then we saw Jennifer and Ann bickering at the hospital a couple times at the beginning of the show, then towards the middle of the show as well. Um, Monday was Jennifer's date with Liam, but the date didn't go so well because J.J. Uh, did his best to sabotage it, um, and it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, we did, da, 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 da. I think that's all the scenes from Monday's date. Um, he, yep, that's all I have. Okay. I'll get started with Tuesday. I'll continue on with the storyline that you left off on. Um, so it started back with EJ telling them to get rid of the clothes and of course Kate's going on about her boots and then EJ informed Kate, Sammy, and Gabby that his cleaners would find and destroy any remaining evidence of the crime and then Sammy was like worried about Will and Gabby got a text message from Sonny that he had found Will so then Kate and Sammy were eager to go running out and find them but EJ was like no we said that Sonny could talk to him alone on his own terms. So they stayed back, didn't want to, but just nodded that they would stay back. Um, and Sammy wondered, you know, aloud, what should she do? And he just urged her to be patient and wait for Sonny to talk to Will. So the phone rang, and everyone in their room, like, jumped. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, they were like, oh, God. So then Gabby answered the phone. And, of course, it was T, bless his little heart. Uh-huh. He was <laughs> Love him. Yes, he was at Club TPD in a panic because, one, it was New Year's Eve. He was by himself, super crowded. He did not know what to do, so he's, like, panicked, and he's like, where is Sonny? And, of course, Gabby Gabby was just like, well, he's out right now. She's preoccupied. And then he was like, okay, well, where is Will? Well, he's out, too. And so then he's like, well, I need some help. And so she was just like, okay, you know, it'll be fine. And she hung up. Well, Sammy got this bright idea. She was like, come on, let's go, EJ. And he's like, what? And she's like, we're going to help. We're going to help the club's reputation because, you know, it could be damaged and, and Sonny could lose money. He was like, I'll reimburse him for any money he lost. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, he did money not want to go. But um, Sammy was just like, oh, come on. And so grabbed him and they headed out the door. Meanwhile, Sonny was in the park um, talking to Will and, you know, he just begged him to listen to him. He was like, please just let me explain. And he was like, you know, he did what he did so that he could protect Ariana. So, of course, Will's kind of confused. And he's like, how is covering up a murder going to protect my daughter? And then, you know, Sonny said that when he first learned about the murder, his first instinct was to call his dad. And that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to 
you know, turn them in. But Sammy and Kate changed his mind. And, and once he heard the whole story, you know, he was like, kind of went on their side with it. So then he explained that Gabby had, you know, screamed at Nick in front of everybody in the town square. So a big crowd of people saw them getting into it. And then later, um, when Nick caught up with Gabby, you know, he had her on the ground. He was attempting to rape her. And so Gabby, of course, hit Nick in the head with a rock to protect herself. And so he just, Will was just saying, you know, he just wished that Sonny would have told him all this earlier. And he said he did it to keep him safe. And they're never good. I know. I know. When's he going to learn this? <laughs> you think after having Sammy as a mother, or, well, no, I'm talking about Sonny. Well, you, you living in Salem, you would think anybody living in Salem would know a lie doesn't get you anywhere. Except, right. Uh, except a destroyed wedding. <laughs> exactly. Or broken up relationships. Mm-hmm. And so then, you know, Will's kind of still shaking his head, and Sonny just said, you know, tell him the truth, and I'm going to save Nick. But it would take Ariana's mother away from her and her grandmother and her great grandmother. And so he just said um, he was upset that he had kept another secret because of his family. And then he said, you know, he's exactly where he wants to be because he had said, you know, you're in another lot for me and you're trying to protect me. And, you know, I keep, my, me and my family keep bringing you into these horrible situations. <laughs> and he just said, he's exactly where he wants to be. Aww. Aww. Oh, uh, no. And then he said something sweet. He said, we'll find a way to get through this for her sake. And then Sonny nodded, of course. And then back at the apartment, Gabby was staring nervously at her phone. She wondered, you know, if the police was going to find out about the murder. Of course, Kate was counseling her to have her, to have her keep her faith and to stay positive. And um, she said, you have to stop thinking about yourself because this isn't just about you. It never has been. And then she showed her a photo of Ariana, and then she you know, that kind of calmed her down a little bit, and she just said that um, Will said everything's going to be fine because Will and Sonny returned and with Ariana, and they said that everything's going to be fine. Sonny explained to him the whole story. So, of course, Gabby, like, runs towards Will and, like, puts him in a chokehold. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She hugged him really tightly, and um, but she like really like banged into him, and then she was apologizing for lying, and you know she didn't want to lie to him, and she wasn't sure how to handle the situation, you know, just going on and on about all that. Well, then Sunny asked, you know, where EJ and Sammy were, and they were like, oh, they went to the club to help tea. So that made Sunny like he just opened his mouth like. Oh my God! Totally he leave. <laughs> and he was like panicked, so he leaves for the club. And then Kate, of course, was like, "Go on, you can go to the club too. You know, you don't want to miss it out. It's New Year's Eve. We'll take care of going on and goodbye." <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and so he left them, which was surprising after everything he just found out. But of course, he loves his grandmother and Gabby, even though what they've done. He still he knows they're not going to hurt the baby. But I thought it was still funny. And then, um, it was funny, Kate made a sash that said 2014 on it and put it on Ariana. Oh, that was adorable. Oh, I know. <laughs> and then they toasted in the new year with some ginger ale. <laughs> and Ari was looking at that glass like, are you going to share any with me, Grandma? She was like <laughs> staring at that glass. I know. She was probably like, is that apple juice? <laughs> <laughs> I really want some of that. Um, but anyways, let's see. So... He was surprised to see EJ and Sammy instead of Sonny or Will. And so um, it was so funny. So Sammy was like, here, put his apron on. And EJ was like, uh, all right. <laughs> he took off his jacket and put on his apron, which was rather hot, I must say. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, and then she said that she's worked at the pub by helping her grandmother for several years. You know, this couldn't be any different. So she starts pouring champagne, and he smiles, and he's actually cute. He goes out and plays the waiter part, if you will, and um, passes out champagne to everybody. And then um, Sonny and Will got to the club, and then T said, oh, it's okay, Sammy and EJ are helping. And um, then Sonny asked Will to stay put, and he walked over to the bar, and then Sammy, like, rushed over to Will and gave him this cute little hug and just saying that she was so sorry for everything. 
And then AJ, of course, asked Sunny how things were, and then Sunny said he explained everything, and that Will's pretty much on board. And um, then Will, you know, told Sammy everything was okay, and that um, he believed that what they had done was the right thing. And then, of course, she apologizes again for lying. And then he said it was all right. She did it to protect him. And then she promised that the next year would be better. That was this little sweet moment between them. And that's actually the last moment between them or between that Two particular actor. actor. Right. Um, and so then, let's see. I think that's about it. They came back. It was 30 seconds till midnight, and EJ joined Sammy back at the bar. That's pretty much that um, storyline for Tuesday. And then Will and Sonny kissed on midnight, the only couple that kissed yes. on midnight. I know. Crazy. I mean, EJ got a little peck on the cheek, but... Yeah, does it count if it's not on the on the lips? I don't I don't think it would count if it's not on the lips. I know. Uh. I'm really sad. <laughs> and then, um, let's see. Other things that happened on Tuesday that I didn't get into was Abigail was going to leave to go out for New Year's, but then she got an unexpected text from Cameron oh, saying that he missed her and was thinking about her. And I thought that was odd because I was like, are they going to bring him back into the picture? Who Not knows? I know of, but hmm. uh. I mean, it was just weird that the text would come through. But it's another hmm. reason to make Abigail boring. I know. Oh, she won't be boring for long. <laughs> Stay tuned um, for spoilers. <laughs> yes, yeah, stay tuned for spoilers, that's for sure. Okay. Um, sweet oh Abigail, I just love her. Okay. <laughs> so then, <laughs> some more that happened on Tuesday was Jennifer, of course, went running cute and of sabotaging Abigail's position because of what JJ had told her on Monday that she was gonna get rid of her um, application and wanted to get her fired. Well then um also on Tuesday, E J was like struggling with or not EJ, sorry, Eric was struggling with Brady because he had hit Daniel. And Daniel was laying on the ground and Nicole was like trying to stop the fight or whatever. Well, Brady puts her in like a headlock. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's uh, he's nuts. He had her in a choke hold for real. And so you not know there was like time. It was really a choke hold. Not like when they yes. were talking about Will and Gabby. This is this, yes. this really happened. <laughs> It was crazy. I was like, oh, my gosh, is he really doing this? And, by the way, he is fantastic when he has to do his character like this. I mean, he's just really brilliant. I really like watching him this way. I don't like him on drugs, obviously, but he's such a great actor Mm -hmm. that he does the role very well. Um, Another thing on Tuesday, of course, Abigail was crying from her text message. She did not go out. JJ showed up, and then they rang in the New Year together as brother and sister. And um, Nicole was doctoring up. Daniel told him that he really needed to get stitches, but he wasn't going there. And then um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. The clock turned midnight and Will and Sunny kissed. Like you said, they were the only ones to kiss. And EJ got a kiss on cheek. <laughs> <laughs> that sums up Tuesday. And then there wasn't a Wednesday show, which means we'll go right into Thursday. Um Sorry. I don't know why, but I'm sitting here looking at the school closing list for t- for tomorrow. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm doing this because I'm <laughs> I'm a senior in college and we're on vacation for another week. But I see that the school <laughs> I graduated from is closed tomorrow. So if anyone is listening that I went that go to the school that I graduated from, now New York City schools are closed tomorrow due to the wind chill advisory. Um and the biggest school in our state has closed already for tomorrow. I mean when the biggest school in your state closes because a day ahead I mean, you know it's going to be bad. So, I mean, be careful out there, everybody. I mean, this isn't just Ohio. This is like the whole eastern half of the country. It's going to be cold tomorrow, so bundle up. Anyways, I don't know why I had to get off track, but I'm going to get right into... (laughs) Thank you for that news report. (laughs) (laughs) Would I make a good weatherman? Or would I make a good... Yes. Yeah? Yes, you would. (laughs) Okay. Uh, If psychology doesn't work out for me, I found my second calling. (laughs) Um, Thursday show, I don't want to have much to discuss because I'm just going to talk about the Jordan scenes. I was going, uh, and then I'll get into the Will and Sunny scenes because, um, those were, um, some very, well, I'll, I'll get into those. Um, anyways, Jordan is at TBD getting a cup of coffee, well, two cups for her and Rafe. And Abby is there with Lucas and Abby introduces Lucas to, um, Jordan. 
and Lucas has a flashback of talking with Kate about Jordan, and he tells Jordan, he says, I've heard a lot about you, which makes Jordan raise an eyebrow like, hmm, well, what does he know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm totally game for some Lucas and Jordan action. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, it might happen. Uh, you never know with Salem, but I'm I prefer Jordan and Rafe myself. Uh, I'm a Aww. kind of a hardcore Jordan and Rafe shipper, but uh, <laughs> I, maybe I shouldn't have admitted that. But oh well. Um, anyways, Lucas says that she knows, or I call Lucas she. Lucas says he knows that Rafe. Or let me just start over here. Lucas says that he knows Rafe, and Kate is his mother. There we go. He says that um, Rafe and Kate have raved about Jordan. He used the word rave. He said they have raved about her. Um, <laughs> I haven't really heard Kate rave about Jordan. I mean, she's ranted and raved about Jordan, but she hasn't really said that she's the best thing to ever walk through Salem. Anyways, <laughs> he says to them that she is no longer um, she is no longer Rafe's PT. So Lucas gets a smile on his face when she says this and says, well, um, I have this uh, this tennis elbow, and it hurts. I've had issues with it for a while. Maybe you could um, – uh, then Abigail interrupts and says, um, we really need to go skiing soon. I think skiing or snowboarding or something with the snow like that. Um, and Jordan says that being from Alabama, she says she's from Birmingham. Um, she hasn't seen much snow, but she'd like to go, you know, go skiing, snowboarding or something. Um, and Lucas asks, asks her if she's staying in Salem, but she's, she says she's not sure yet. Um, so, and she kind of felt awkward when Jordan, when Lucas asked Jordan if she was staying. She kind of hesitated and said, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> she's got a history, and I can't wait to find out what it is, because there's something about that Jordan Ridgway, if that is her name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jordan tells Abigail, she said, well, text me and we'll meet up sometime, and she heads out the door. And Lucas still seems to have goo eyes over her. He's, like, staring at her as she walks out the door. I mean, it's been a while for Lucas. I mean, he he could use a lady. It's been a while. Um, oh, the last one was summer or autumn. Autumn. <laughs> autumn, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And um, Sammy would call her fall. fall. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't re- I really couldn't remember her name. I, I mean, I, I knew it was a season. I, that's how I remember I knew it was a season. I didn't know which one it was. Oh, um, we flashed to the uh, Rafe's um, apartment. Um, Gabby was there and had left. Um, she brought Ariana over, and they talked for a little bit. But that's not important. What I want to talk about is Jordan Rafe. Rafe comes out of the bathroom in his towel after getting a shower, and um, <laughs> he stumbles through the kitchen into the living room. I mean, the kitchen and living room is basically one thing. Um, and he falls right there in front of the couch. And then as soon as he does that, someone knocks on the door. Um, And he says, uh, of course, someone would knock on the door at this time. Um, He says, come in, and it's Jordan. So when he sees it's Jordan, he kind of situates himself to make it look like that he did, you know, trying to act all cool and everything. Like, oh, I'm just sitting here chilling on the floor. I didn't do, I didn't fall. Um, So Jordan has (laughs) coffee for him. Like I said, he leans on the couch trying to play it cool. And Rafe is like, so what's up? And Jordan says, here I brought you a double espresso. And Rafe says, cool, I could use a pick-me-up. (laughs) <laughs> he literally could use a picture because he's on the floor. <laughs> but, That's hilarious. <laughs> I love their banter. It's pretty cute. I know. It is. Cute. Um, so <laughs> Jordan asked him, she says, so why are you, are you going to tell me why we're sitting on the floor? And Rafe says, <laughs> well, I was having a good PT session with Pete. Um, I think that's his name. And then he said, I just came out of the shower, and I was walking through the kitchen into the living room, and my left leg just, just gave out. And Jordan says, uh-oh. Rafe is like, oh, do you think it's serious? And she says, yeah, you're seriously a fool. <laughs> Rafe doesn't know how to react to this, but he says, or um, Jordan says, you need to have as much sense, common sense as your little niece. Um, think about it. She takes a few steps, and she, she falls, and then she gives up because you, she, she knows that her body, I mean, I don't know if she can really know at that point that her body can't go any farther, but she knows not to push herself any farther. Jordan says that you have to listen to your body is the whole point of what she was trying to make. <laughs> and Rafe says, you're not the boss of me anymore. <laughs> and Jordan tries to get – she gets up and tries to head out the door. But uh, Rafe stops her, pulls her back to the couch, 
brings her close and then kisses her. So there was a sweet little Jordan Wraith kiss there for all you Jordan Wraith fans. Um, I believe their shipper name is Jace. At least that's the hashtag I've been using on Twitter. So if you like them, use hashtag J-A-F-E on Twitter. Um, anyway, back to the show that we're doing right now. Um, Jordan pulls away, and she she pulls away with a smile. I mean, you, she pulls away from Rafe. She has a smile on her face. Um, and she uh, gets up, and she cleans her glasses off. So evidently, her glasses had fogged up as she was kissing Rafe. So I guess that kind of speaks to Rafe's kissing abilities. Um, <laughs> Jordan asked him if it was a setup, if, if he sets this all up. And he says, I don't think that would have been my best move to have you walk in on me laying on the floor after I had fallen uh, because I just couldn't stand. Um, she asks if – she hands him his clothes and says, can you get dressed on your own? He says, I don't know. It'll be pretty tough. I could use some help. Uh, <laughs> he he just will not stop with flirting with her. He's not going to stop until he gets her. Um, and it's been a while for Rafe, too. Like Lucas, it, it's been a while for Rafe. Well, not really. Yeah, Rafe was in a coma. Yeah. And that was – he was with Kate before the coma. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's been a while. But mm-hmm. I still think Lucas has had the longest dry spell. Um so they exchange a smile, Rafe and Jordan, and um, she drops his clothes on him and walks over to, to the dresser and picks up her phone and is calling someone. She says that he's she's calling the PT to help him get dressed. Well, Rafe does not hesitate to jump up from the couch and hobble over to Jordan and take the phone and hang up. He says that we don't need Pete. I think we can do this on our own. And then he pulls her in and they kiss again. <laughs> and that is how the Jordan rape scene in on Thursday. And then those continue into Friday, which I'm not going to get into, but of course Kate had to ruin it all. But anyways, Miss took into that maybe. Um the other things that happened on Thursday, we had Sammy and Kate scenes. Um Sammy was heading out of town and she wanted to make sure that Kate would watch over Gabby and the boys. Um Stefano and E J talked about Sammy. Um as I mentioned, Gabby had come over to talk with Rafe, um just about a few things. Um, uh, Abby and Gabby had lunch at the pub, um, and Abby had received a text from Nick, but of course we all know that was from Kate because Kate has his phone now. Um, we had some intense EJ, well, they weren't the most intense, but pretty intense EJ and Sammy scenes um, where EJ is confronting her about leaving and not telling him. <clears throat> uh and then, like I said, the Will and Sunny scenes. Um, I guess I could talk about this a little bit since. Well, anyways, uh, Will had left. I missed the beginning of the show on thurs- uh, Thursday <clears throat> because we had a breaking weather, so I went and watched it. And evidently, Sunny had a dream about the his New Year's resolution. I believe. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't see it. I had I tried to go back and find it, but um, he had a dream about his New Year's resolution, and his New Year's resolution was to, it said, marry Will Horton. And Will opened, or Will found it, I believe, right? He found it. Yeah, you know how he puts those things in that box for the new year, and at the end of the year they read it? Right. Yeah, that's what it, that's what he was dreaming. He was putting it in there, but Will came up behind him. Okay, and then he found it, and then as soon as he was uh, reading it, then Nick came in the door. Yes. He said, um, Maybe you should ask your boyfriend about what he's been lying to you about for months. And, of course, Nick is pertaining to the Melanie situation from a few summers ago. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that was all a dream. Um, Will had went to the river to – I don't know why he went to the river to see if Nick was there, I assume. Anyways, um, the greetings man <laughs> came up behind him. Oh, that guy gets on my nerves. Um, <laughs> and told him – or was talking to him about – I didn't. I couldn't even understand. He was talking about some kind of bird that he saw fall into the river and die. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um, but anyways, Sonny woke up. You say it was lethal that time of year, like giving all these like hints that he knows. Oh, okay. Well, but maybe he doesn't know. He's just acting yeah, he or pretty saying clueless. stuff like that. He seems pretty yeah. clueless to me. Um, but anyways, Sonny found out that Will wasn't there, so because he looked in the closet again, the closet <laughs> made an appearance. <laughs> Um, so he got, uh, Will's jacket and automatically knew that he was down by the river. Um, so he went down there and anyways, um, they talked and then the greetings man left and, um, Will wanted to know, he asked him, he said, do you think that Nick should have died? 
I mean, he was a bad person, but should he should he have died? Um, and Sonny says no. And Will just he is standing there by the riverbed, just looking in the river, and I, I guess trying to process everything that has happened. And um, Sonny says that they just have to accept what happened and move on from it. And he looks at Will, and he says, "Come on, let's go home and see our little girl." And Sonny leads Will out of the picture, and they head home. And that was the last time that we'll see Chandler Massey on our screens because that episode was his last air date. <clears throat> um, January 8th, I believe, is the first um, episode of the new Will. They recast him, and he'll debut. And he'll debut that at, on that date. Um, Guy Wilson will debut at that point. Um, but I think Missy will probably have that in your sport, uh, casting news. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the last episode for Chandler Massey. Um, he had a great run: two daytime Emmys and well, three nominations and two daytime Emmy awards. Um, kind of wish he would have had a better exit, but what can you do? It's a soap. It's a business. Um, anyways, that's all I have for Thursday's days. Okay. Friday. I guess I will talk about the um, Brady, Eric, and Nicole stuff for Friday. So when Daniel went to the Kiriakis mansion, he was going to check on Brady, but he ran into Maggie, and he realized then, after he mentioned Brady from the previous day, that Maggie had not spoken to Brady yet. So he went ahead and told her that Brady relapsed, (laughs) which (laughs) I was expecting him just to blurt it out like that, but he did. And so she kind of panicked a little bit, and two of them started making phone calls to try to see where Brady was um, because they... You know, Daniel had tried to get in touch with him, left a couple messages, and he wasn't calling him back. So um, Brady left to go look in the park, and Maggie said that she'll check with Victor, Nicole, and Brady. Well, Nicole, um, she was startled when she arrived at her office at the TV station, and Eric was sitting in there. She wasn't expecting him to be in there. And he was reviewing the the proofs of the photos that he took um, of her previously for the news story. And so she, you know, was excitedly looking at the pictures, and he asked her if um, how she had spent New Year's Eve with Daniel. And then Nicole just, you know, said that Eric could have changed the subject or whatever. She just said, you could have emailed the pictures to me. I didn't. And then he said, I needed to see you. It's about Brady. Well, they were talking about Brady and how he was supposed, Eric was supposed to have went with him to the AA meeting that he said that it was closed meeting, and then afterwards, he couldn't find Brady. Um, So they were, you know, a little bit worried about that. But he said that Brady wanted to go home because he didn't want to be out partying on New Year's Eve. So, likely story. Um, Before Eric went to meet with Father Matt, um, he showed Nicole, which was his favorite um, picture of her. And, of course, I'm sitting here thinking... Oh, Lord, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> he is not going to want to be a priest. But um, it hasn't said that for yet, for sure yet, but I'm thinking that. So anyway, he leaves, and he left his cell phone behind. So Nicole picks it up and realizes it's Maggie trying to call. Well, she tries to catch Eric, but he's like long gone, apparently. And so then her phone starts ringing, like instantly after Eric stopped ringing. And so then it was Maggie, and Nicole was like, good grief. It's Maggie. And so <laughs> then she, you know, picks up the phone and Maggie told him, have you heard from Brady? He's missing in action. Daniel's going to find him. And then Nicole was like, oh, my God, I'm headed that way. So she goes in, into the way to try to find Brady where Daniel was going. And then, of course, Brady is at the park and he's buying his drugs from the drug dealer. Um, but as the dealer counted his money, he said that you're short. And Brady was like, no, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. And he said, lucky I know you're loaded. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess he knew that he would get his money eventually. So Brady got it or whatever. And then two guys, I have no idea who they are, they just showed up and demanded that he hand over his wallet. They were horrible numbers. Let me just say they were horrible. (laughs) I was like, where'd they get these two? (laughs) But, um... Took it, they took his watch, his wallet, and everything from him or whatever, and but he was fighting back, and so they beat him up pretty badly. 
which was hilarious to watch. But <laughs> big event. And so he we're laughing at him already getting beat the, the living <laughs> crap beat out of him. But it was funny to watch. I mean, the two actors are quite horrible. Yeah. Mm. I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> so, of course, I cleared out his wallet and took his vial. And they were like, two grams? That's all you got? And they're like <laughs> complaining about it. And I'm like, seriously? But then Daniel, of course, shows up to save the day. He got in a couple like of punches. <laughs> he got in a couple of punches himself before they left. And then Brady was like laying on the ground, barely could open his eyes. And um, Daniel got him up onto the bench and called Maggie to let her know that she found him. And then um, he said that he has bruised ribs. I'm like, how do you know this without? You have to x-ray uh, over. X-ray. Yeah. You... <laughs> Oh, uh, whatever. But whatever. So he's saying that his ribs are bruised or whatever. So Nicole shows up and, you know, she's relieved that he's fine or whatever, more or less, even though he was beat up. So they take him back to the Kyrakis mansion. Not to the hospital, but to the mansion. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so um, meanwhile, Eric is talking to Father Matt. Um, he said that there hadn't been any developments in his case. And then Father Matt guess that something else was going on with Eric. He could always tell when something's not right. And so Eric confessed that he had feelings for Nicole that went far beyond friendship. Finally! Well, it's a little bit too late now, happen. buddy. <laughs> it's a little too late now because Nicole's fake dating Daniel now, so oh, chance. It's going to be a sad, sad day. And Daniel has <laughs> no idea that he's dating Nicole, which is the best part about it all. I know. <laughs> so then... um. He said that his dreams have really been about loving Nicole. And so then Father Matt was saying that, you know, you're only human. It's okay to have those kinds of feelings, even for a priest. The difference was how Eric acted on his feelings. So then he also said, ever thought that these feelings came up in order to give you some comfort to make you realize that if you weren't in a priesthood, you could have another life. Maybe not with Nicole, but with somebody else you could embrace. Of course, that would assume that you still want to be a priest. Sweet Father Matt. I really like him. I was watching him this weekend on the Waltons. Really? Yeah. It was on. Yeah. It was a, it was a Walton wedding or something on some channel. That but is hilarious. Yeah. He's a father on the Waltons. I didn't know anything else. Huh. You didn't know that? No. You've never heard of the Waltons? No, yeah. I didn't know he was on there, though. Yeah, he's the father. Like the, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, I've only heard of it. I've never watched it. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I'll have to go back and watch them over. <laughs> You're like in shock about that. I know, yes, yeah, I've I mean, never I seen it. I've only heard about them. Oh, uh, well, now you know. Well, I'll have to go check it out. <laughs> um, so, anyways, <laughs> back on track here. Um, <laughs> Eric maintained that being a priest was his calling. And then Father Matt, of course, wondered if Eric's feelings for Nicole stemmed from her helping to clear his name. And he said, no, that wasn't it, especially because Nicole had moved on with someone else. Plus, he had accused her of being the one who attacked him. And so, of course, you know, that makes him feel bad. And then he figures that, um, sorry, Dawn's tracking me up in the chat room. She says, I haven't lived unless I've watched the Walton. <laughs> so true. I'm going to have to do that. Okay. Um, anyway, sorry, I get distracted easily. <laughs> so they have a little talk about that and then everything. And then Daniel, back at the mansion, you know, tries to ease Maggie's tears because she saw Brady. And, of course, you know, Maggie, she's just like, oh. Brady, you know, and she's trying to gently comfort him. And then, um, of course, she said that he had lied to everyone because that, or that he was an addict. And then he said, yes, he played Maggie and everyone else because he was mad and embarrassed and he wanted to be alone to get high. And then Maggie felt that Brady needed to get into her program. So when he refused, she insisted that he go to the next meeting. And then, of course, he goes to look for his watch and it's not there. But then Nicole had it. How did she get it back? Did those guys drop it? Evidently. I mean, I don't think she went and chased him down and beat it out of him. I mean, they, I must, know. they must have dropped it. Huh. Weird. So anyway, so Maggie's like, there's in that, or he's like, there's this, yeah, sorry. He's like, there's a meeting that starts in 10 minutes. And then Maggie says, I can get you there in 15. So then she um 15 minutes to get in. across Salem. Salem is not that big. It doesn't take 15 minutes to get across town. People can get from the <laughs> pub to the hospital in 30 seconds. <laughs> Well, it might not have been in town. It might have been where oh. Rafe and Sammy was. Oh, my apologies. That safe house. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> it probably is in town. <laughs> but 
anyway, so they leave together. And then Brady, of course, you know, was thanking Daniel and Nicole for saving his life. And then um, they go to the station, I think, or back to her office or somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh But anyway, Nicole admitted to Daniel that she was worried about um, Brady and that he was living away again because he could have died. And then, of course, Daniel soothing her, reminding her that, you know, Brady did not die and that they wouldn't leave him alone. And then Daniel says that he's lucky to have someone like her who cares about him so much in his corner, which he said that she cares about, people that she cares about, she's always there for, like, regardless. And so they're, like, they have their arms wrapped around each other like they're in a little hug or whatever. Well, he says, or she says, I'm lucky to have you in my life because whenever you're around, I feel totally safe, totally appreciated. It's like everything's going to be fine. And, of course, Eric is out in the hallway and overhears it, and he's, you know, he doesn't say anything. He just leaves. So then um, when Maggie and Brady get back from the meeting, Maggie offered to get Victor so that Brady could talk to him about what happened. And then Brady agreed and said that today should be the day that he makes amends. Why not do it in one fell swoop? And so, but after Maggie left, Brady poured himself a drink. <laughs> so I was like, nah, nah, nah. Okay, that's all that storyline. Um, other things that happened, of course, was the Jordan and Rafe on the sofa. And then, like you said, Kate interrupts. <laughs> and then um, they have a little snarky comments or whatever with each other. And then Kate gets a phone call from someone. Um, and then she said, no, my son will do the interview. So I'm not sure who she's talking to there. But she said it's going to be quite a surprise for Miss Richway. So I'm curious to see what that's going to be about. Um, also on Friday, um, Abby and Gabby had lunch, and she got a text message from Nick, and <laughs> Gabby freaked out, because I thought Gabby knew Kate had the phone. I, no, I, no, well, no, because, well, I mean, if she, if she did, she probably forgot, because, you know, it was a pretty, pretty traumatic event that she experienced, so if she did, she probably just forgot about it, but obviously she didn't. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, she freaks out, like, drops her glass, like, does everything, so, of course, Abby... I mean, she's a Wharton, so she's nosy. And so she's the wanting to find hilarious. out what's wrong with her. You, you didn't say the text. The text was the funny part. <laughs> she got the text from Nick's phone, and it said that everything is going swimmingly. And that is when <laughs> Gabby dropped the phone, which is funny because, you know, Nick is swimming down the Salem River. River. Yeah. That's right. That's, that is funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't catch what it was because I was – did most of my notes on the other story, but that is hilarious. Um, but she did, of course, she freaks out, and then Abby's like, well, I'm going to call Hope. And she was like, no, no, no. And then Hope is apparently going to Smith Island with Sierra. So then um, something else on Friday was EJ and Sammy, of course. They were having their, their little feud, but EJ said she could go on to Chicago for the business meeting. And then Gabby shows up there all freaking out, and that's when EJ tells her that Kate had his phone. And that he's not alive. It's Kate. So then she kind of calls it down, but then she realizes, oh, crap, Abby. So then EJ takes Gabby's phone and texts Abby to say, don't don't speak to Hope until you can talk to me or whatever. But then she's like, too late, I'm on my way to Smith Island. So then EJ goes after her. And at the end of Friday, I think Abigail, she just arrived outside the, the Horton cabin, and she was about to knock on the door when EJ says, don't do that. But that little smile on his face. Oh, boy. And that's how Friday ended. And that ending is foreshadowing into this week's episode. So, dun, dun, dun. that's mine. Um, <laughs> so, let's see. I have spoilers, um, and Misty has casting news. So, I think what we're going to do here as we wrap up the show, um, I'm going to let Misty get into her casting news first. I'm going to give the spoilers, and then I'll let Misty close the show. So, um, go ahead and give whatever casting news you have. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't know how many of you have heard this, but sometime in late January, Daniel Crossgrove um, is going to be a new character named Aiden. He was also on All My Children as Scott Chandler and As the World Turns as Chris Hughes. Um, and he was also on Conning Light as Bill Lewis. Well, so he's very famous yeah. for his soap. I watched him on As the and, World Turns, and he did an awesome job. So this is getting a really, a really good actor right here. Yeah, and he was also on 90210. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I really know him from. Uh-huh. But he's going to be coming in late January at some point. Um, 
Then, of course, Chandler Massey's last appearance was January 2nd. Guy Wilson takes over on January 8th. Somebody named Martinez, and it doesn't give me a first name or a last name, so I don't know if that's the first or the last name, <laughs> but they are portraying Durango Dynamite on January 7th. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> I couldn't even begin to guess. And then someone named Clinton Jackson appears as a shopkeeper on January 7th. No idea. Hmm. Um, Jade Harlow, she is going to be coming um, in January. She's going to, she played Jessica Bennett on Passion. And her character name has not been released yet, but there have been suggestions. I found it. has? Okay, good. I was wondering if she was Cheryl. Yeah, that's Cheryl. Okay, Mm -hmm. okay. Because I saw that name in the spoilers. Okay, so she's going to be Cheryl, and she's suggested that she will be a love interest for Lucas. Uh-huh. And then um, they're replacing the twins that play Sydney. So they're looking for a five-year-old twin with blue eyes, and, of course, it has to be girls. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to say they're going to replace the, the twins that play Ariana Grace. I was going to say, no, no, no. No, they're replacing Sydney. They don't know with who yet, so they're looking for... Um, Casting, they're doing casting for her right now. Nadia and Talia are the two girls that currently play Sydney, so they're being replaced. Um, it also says that they're looking for a cast to cast a man of any um, ethnicity, I can't say that word, <laughs> ethnic, with a distinctive voice to play a hitman for several episodes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and <we> then <laughs> the show is casting for a woman named Deborah in her early 30s to 40s who is blonde, blue eyed, petite, and fit. She had a bad marriage and is looking to rebuild her life. That is just a three-day principal role. So that's kind of weird. Three days? Um, yeah, three-day principal weird. role. Huh. They're also looking to cast Howell, a gruff and grumpy 75-year-old man <laughs> who is the president of the Domino's Club. <laughs> what is the Domino's Club? Uh, is, that that. What, is that where Apollo stripped? Oh, is it? I don't know. Oh. I don't remember. Huh. I don't remember the name of that club. But anyway, he's pre- he's going to be the president of Domino's Club. Okay. <laughs> They're also casting for two different roles. Um, one for Giselle, who is a 40 to 50-year-old high society woman. woman. Um, they're seeking all women of any ethnic, intelligent, um, and bordering on regal. Recently oh. left for her husband for a younger woman. She's going to be in multiple show- shows. And then the second one is for a 20 to 30 year old to play a mugger. This includes stunt work and should be of average height. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty um, <laughs> Charlotte Ross, who was the ex Eve Donovan, she's been chatting with the executives at Days of Our Lives about a possible return. Yay! Oh. Drake Hogeston has returned to the studio and he began taping scenes to return for sometime in February or March. And then Camilla Banis, she exits as Gabby Hernandez. Um, her last tape date is in January, and the ca- character exits in April or May. Yeah, they tape five months. Right now, it, they tape five months in advance. So, mm-hmm. yeah, she'll be on for quite a while. Yep. All right. Wonder, That's all I have. I'm interested to see how she'll exit. But um, I know. That's what I'm so waiting for. Cause I'm like, how are they going to do this? They better reveal what she did two summers ago. I mean, how long have we been waiting for that reveal? I mean, mm-hmm. two years. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so some spoilers for next week, the week of January 6th. Nicole receives an unexpected message from Marlena. Um, JJ's latest situation may land him in jail yet again. Um, it becomes apparent to hope that Sierra is having issues at school. Oh, that kid. Oh, Sierra. <laughs> She's got issues all over the place. Um, Cheryl and Jordan are on a collision course, courtesy of Kate. Hmm. There's a new new cast member, so it appears that Cheryl will debut Thursday, January 9th, um, according to spoilers. <laughs> and Dr. Chika is ordered by Stefano to keep Daniel from the truth. So Dr. Chika makes an appearance yet again. <laughs> huh. Well, I wonder. I wonder how Daniel will. I don't under. I'm not sure I understand that. Dan, Dr. Trike is ordered by Stefano to keep Daniel from the truth. Well, how is Daniel going to discover the truth? I don't know. Uh, tune in next week and find out. I <laughs> uh, know. <laughs> That's all I have for spoilers. Okay. 
So before we end our show, we would like to remind you all to follow us on Twitter at CG Online Radio and like us on Facebook. All you have to do is type in Common Ground Radio in the search bar. Drop us a comment on our page. And tell us what you think about our show, what you would like for us to talk about. Also, check out airnationradio.com because there you'll not only find a link to all of our past shows, so you can download and listen to them anytime you please, but you will find a little biography on myself and Brandon, along with all our other amazing shows, on the Air Nation Radio Network. Sorry, I'm reading way too fast. <laughs> airnationradio.com. Check it out. If you haven't, you must check it out. And you can follow them on Twitter as well at Air Nation Radio. Also, if you are into iHeartRadio, you can find us there. We're under the talk show category. So again, we would like to thank everyone who joined us in the chat room this evening. We hope that you all had as much fun as we did. We'll be back here next week, same time, same place. Now, I have been working on trying to get some of the day's faves to come and do an interview with us. Now, we've gotten a couple of responses from a few of the cast members, so we're extremely excited to get those interviews set up soon. So we have, hope to have more on that, um, and we'll give you details on that as soon as we get dates and time scheduled. So I think that covers it all. For Common Ground Radio, I'm Misty. I'm Brandon. Good night, guys. Good night. You've been listening to Common Ground Radio with hosts Brandon and Misty on the Air Nation Radio Network. Thank you for joining us.